I'm really sorry, but, uh, you need to be at least this tall to ride, buddy. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. I just, uh, I just gotta enforce them. Oh, hey, hey, okay, that's not nice. You need to get out of here. <laughs> you need to go, buddy. <laughs> child. Hey, it's me. <laughs> uh, so that was fun. It's been a while since I did a good old caving montage. Uh, and that's uh, something that I used to do uh, quite a bit during my uh, peak UHC playing days. Uh, to be honest, I always enjoyed making those videos more than playing UHC, ironically. Um, <laughs> now that I'm, uh, really dedicating, uh, my time to this world more, I am kind of confused why I spent so many years, uh, playing so many different games. Um, I mean, I know why. It's because of the, the people I played with, the friends I made along the way, right? Um, but if not for that, <laughs> uh, I would call myself insane. I am telling you, I, uh, am not a fan of starting over the first few days of Minecraft are so slow compared to the, uh, the end game and all the cool stuff they added. I feel like playing UHC makes me want to rip my hair out anymore because I have to chop down so many trees and there's just like so many features in the game, like literally 90% of the game uh, is, is locked out uh, to you because you only have like two and a half hours to get resources before you die and lose them all. Um, <laughs> and that's the other thing is people are just so good at UHC anymore. I feel like uh, it's only really fun when people aren't good at it and uh, people are just too good at it now. <laughs> a lot better than me, so. <laughs> um, that's uh, one of the big reasons why I'm making videos doing this now. So maybe every once in a while I'll uh, throw in a, a cool caving montage or building montage or something. I have been working on the railroad all the ding dong day <laughs> and um, I'm tired but it's pretty close to at least somewhat functional. Uh, like I said, I still plan to dig this out uh, quite a ways and extend the line, but I think I'm just going to take it to about here uh, to test the system, uh, mainly because I'm running out of rail tracks. That's one of the reasons that I needed to go mining today. Um, so I'm just going to uh, finish this line and the pattern that I have it and then power up all these rails um, and then I'll be able to uh, place down the layer of mud so I'll probably 
come back for an update once that's done. just want to take a second to see if this whole thing's even going to work because it would be kind of sucky if we put in all this effort and then it didn't even work right So we got the hopper and the minecart going back and forth under this whole uh, layer of dirt and mud right here. Uh, now the key is that the dirt cannot pull things under, but I think the mud can. Uh, so we're going to see if this right here gets taken. And it did. Cool. Uh, so that's kind of the idea for this farm. Uh, this mud right here is going to catch all the, the wood and the saplings and apples and everything that I miss, uh, sticks I guess, uh, and it's going to all fall down here. Uh, the center is probably going to be where I mainly plant the trees, so the canopies will be out uh, to these corners. Um, and then a lot of the time the stuff's gonna fall uh, around here on the left and the right if we are able to catch this uh, yeah that stone is uh, just right in the hopper um, I'll probably have to rework this slightly because I realized that uh, all these blocks below here are going to have to be hoppers uh, in order to catch what's in the the minecart hopper uh, so because of that I can't really have them powered from underneath like this I'm probably going to have to use activator rails but that'll be fine because I already set it up to where these are staggered every two blocks uh, so I should just be able to replace this first one with an activator rail and it won't be uh, too much different at all. Um, but then yeah, the idea will be uh, there will be a line of hoppers running down this whole way. Uh, and while the minecart's traveling on this line here going back to the beginning, it will be feeding everything that it picked up uh, into these hoppers. And I think I'll just have like a chest at the end over here with either uh, an item dropper down to a collection point below or an item elevator up to a collection point above. I'm not entirely sure how I want to des design this aesthetically yet. So I'm just making sure it works first of all. And then after that I can make it look nice. Okay. 
This world has so many Endermen, it's getting kinda ridiculous. I don't know if they've upped the spawn rates in recent versions or what, but um, I am seeing them all the time. Like, I used to think they were rarer than the other mobs uh, by quite a bit, and that made sense because they're a little harder to take down and their loot is a little bit more useful. Yeah, they're everywhere now. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> just look at how many pearls I got, um, just like, by circumstance, I haven't even really been hunting for them, but I already probably have enough to find the stronghold and fill up the portal frame if I use them wisely, so that's, uh, cool, but it's, yeah, <laughs> sort of insane. The other thing is that they have been griefing the heck out of this world, and um, it's getting pretty bad. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's severe enough yet that I need to turn Enderman griefing off, but I'm starting to notice uh, small little things pretty much everywhere that aren't really where they're supposed to be. Exhibit A, Exhibit B, uh, this is actually from our friendly gravel enderman in the second or third episode. <laughs> uh, he did end up leaving it for us, but not in the house. Exhibit C, oh, that was Exhibit D, but it's gone now. Uh, I don't know if I placed this or not, but I don't think so. I didn't even know they could pick up basalt, so that might be me, but if not, exhibit C. This is definitely exhibit D. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> um, or exhibit F. I'm going backwards. That's how confused I am at, at why there's so many endermen around here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really bad. The zombies in this game are getting sneakier. They've started training in uh, the same ninja tactics that I'm used to. So it's um, been a little bit tougher to defeat them. It's not too tough, but it's been getting tougher. See, what is this? <laughs> This is getting to be way too much. I changed uh, this room up a little bit too downstairs here uh, because it was starting to get really messy <laughs> um, there's still uh, quite a bit of junk in all the barrels but I've been slowly moving it out of the house starting from upstairs and uh, I still have some work to do down here um, I captured Zisto uh, for some reason not really sure what I want to uh, do with uh, that, but <laughs> um, he's making a lot of noise down here in the meantime. I also switched out all the furnaces I had over in this corner for a pretty basic auto smelting system. You just put in the stuff you want to cook up here, fuel down here, uh, and yeah, you can collect it down here. Nothing too crazy. These are most of the resources I've collected so far. Uh, I had a lot more iron, but I just used a lot of it for the rail track project downstairs. But, um, I'm starting to get pretty rich. I haven't really felt the need to go uh, caving too much, um, which is pretty nice. I can spend a lot of the time building and making farms, which is 
what I like to do uh, in this game mostly anyway. I like that the newer updates have made a lot of things a lot less grindy, or at least, oops, uh, at least giving you more options to do uh, some things. So this is starting to be pretty much uh, fully functional. There's just a few little quirks that I'm uh, still trying to figure out. Yeah, there you can see it picked pretty much everything up. Uh, I think sometimes it is getting full, so it can't pick everything up. Um, and that is going to become kind of an issue because the timing of this is sort of off. Um, you can see when it passes through here, it does it pretty quick, so it doesn't give it a whole lot of time for the items to move through into this chest. Um, and I don't think it's going to be able to pick up some of this stuff on the second run through either. Yeah, like you can see it got the saplings that it already had some of in its inventory, but it skipped over the apples, so they're probably going to despawn before everything's unloaded into here. Um, which means it's going to ultimately miss some stuff, and that doesn't make me too happy. So, um, I could either extend this hopper line all the way through here, and that would probably give it enough time to feed everything through in a single run. But that would take a whole lot of iron, um, which is an option, but I definitely don't have enough to do that right now. And it would take a lot of time to get that much. And uh, I could probably use these hoppers better in other projects anyway. I do think it's possible to create a system on the end over here that uh, will detect every time the hopper has items in it and switch its track to an unloading uh, kind of station. And then when it's empty, uh, it can send it back through, um, which seems a little bit of a smarter setup. And I'd like to try to figure out how to do that. So I'm just going to spend the rest of uh, this video log messing around with some redstone stuff. Um, and like I said before, these aren't going to be my own original designs or anything. Um, I'm following a tutorial from Mumbo Jumbo uh, just on some like really basic stuff. Uh, and I just want to see if I can teach myself a thing or two, so uh, bear with me because I'm not very good at this. So this is the vomit machine. Anything you put in it, it vomits. Um. <laughs> which is actually pretty useful. Uh, it might be handy for uh, transporting stuff if you like put a water stream down below and uh, direct items somewhere. The other cool thing is if you put it uh, vertically, it kind of acts as like an item elevator if you stack them up. so that would definitely be pretty useful. I'm thinking this is most likely going to be the solution for our problem down in the wood farm, uh, where the hopper minecart doesn't really have enough time to feed into the hopper below while it's passing through. Uh, and the way that this works is um, if I were to put some stuff in this hopper minecart here, um, pretend this is like wood from the farm, and send it over to this track right here. Uh, what happens is when this passes over the hopper and starts feeding anything into here, it 
tells this comparator to uh, power this torch and invert it, which powers this line, and depowers uh, this rail track, uh, which will freeze the hopper in place. Uh, and that happens long enough, um, or I guess as long as um, things are feeding through the hopper, it's going to keep powering this and inverting the line so that it's not powered. Then as soon as everything's unloaded, uh, this track gets powered once again. Um, and all the items end up in this chest down below. That way it's only hanging around exactly as long as it needs to to drain everything out. And it's not really wasting any time um, passing through over and over and over again without feeding all its items through. So this would be sort of the sister machine to the last example. Um, since the last system was meant to unload items from the minecart to the chest, uh, this one's more of a chest to minecart type unloader. Uh, and that's another one that's going to be handy if I want to uh, transport items a long distance. Like let's say I move to another base down the line. Um, I could extend this rail track somewhere else and uh, send like five stacks of items at a time to uh, wherever I want them to go. Um, and the way this one works is um, the comparator is going to be looking for a full signal strength of 15 to come out of this minecart here. Um, and this comparator here um, is getting that signal strength of 15 from right here, so that's what tells it to look for that. Um, if I were to send this one off, you can see I have about five stacks of items draining here. And as soon as it's empty, this piston should retract and send it off on its way. you want the system to be sent off when it has less than five stacks of items, then you can switch out this uh, constant power of 15 uh, with a hopper um, and put an amount of items in it that is uh, roughly what you want it to be. Um, so if I put in two stacks of items, it's not going to accept two stacks exactly but it's going to accept around that before it gets sent off. Yeah, you can see it didn't take the full set of items. It just took about this much and then maybe a little bit more because uh, this one does have a slight delay every time it fires, uh, so it just gives it enough time to suck up maybe another like two or three blocks more than you tell it to. Uh, if you want to account for that, it's not too hard. You just need to take like um, a little bit, you know, less than you think you need. So for about two stacks, maybe 61 or 62 would uh, work here instead. Last one for today. Um, and this one's kind of hard to explain, but I think you can visually see what's going on a little bit easier than maybe I can describe it. It's basically a conveyor belt for blocks um, using observers pointed in four different directions and then pistons uh, in four different directions as well. And you can kind of see, uh, with the exception of this side, it's basically just the same pattern repeated four times facing different ways. Um, so that when I press this button, it will cycle a chain exactly one block forward in each direction. And then these observers uh, will see that this previous block in the chain moved and tell the piston to push the block forward, which will then trigger the next observer seeing that this block moved and tell the next piston to push the block forward, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, it feels like it's about that time again. 
I'm going to go ahead and call it a day here. Um, but this episode has been really fun to make in particular. Uh, this whole project has been a ton of fun. So I think I'm going to keep it up for a while. I uh, wasn't sure if after making a few videos it would be something that I really wanted to continue or not. Um, so I'm happy to say that uh, I'm having fun with it. I was feeling kind of nostalgic the other day, um, and I decided to look up how long it's actually been since I started playing this game for the first time. Uh, I just remember that it was about a week or two before Jungles and Iron Golems were added to the game. That was a really big thing at the time that I started playing, and I remember that every world I started around then <laughs> was a was a jungle spawn world. It seemed like they generated everywhere. Uh, so that biome is a pretty core part of my memory for this game and starting out. I think it's kind of convenient that we actually spawned next to a jungle in this world, so it's kind of funny. Um, but anyway, <laughs> the reason I'm saying that is because uh, I looked up when that update came out and I'm not sure the exact day that I started playing, um, but it seems like it was somewhere at the end of February 2012 that uh, I started playing Minecraft for the first time. Um, and at the time that I'm recording this, it's currently February 2024, uh, the end of February. I'm not sure. Uh, how long this is going to take to be posted, or if it's going to even be posted anywhere, but uh, that's when I'm recording it, so I've been playing this game for almost 12 years exactly, and that's super crazy. Obviously I haven't been playing that the whole time, but uh, yeah, um, it's been a ton of fun. So, um, if I press F3, it's also conveniently the 365th day that we've been living in this world uh, in Minecraft time. Uh, and that uh, is kind of skewed because I've been AFKing for a little bit and uh, I've been sleeping through the night sometimes. So it's not like uh, 365 times 20 minute days exactly. But I still think it counts as my Minecraft player's birthday. Uh, so, we are in the birthday room with pork chop and uh, this guy, uh, and we're just celebrating the 12 year anniversary of, of me playing Minecraft and the one year anniversary of uh, Ninja in this world. <laughs> um, I have an idea for what I want to do for a bigger mega base now after I'm done with the starter home too and I've been uh, putting little hints at what I'm gonna do in the episode titles I uh, think it'll be pretty obvious by around episode 8 or 9 what the plan is but uh, if you look really closely you can actually figure it out right now probably I think there's enough information out there enough breadcrumbs to figure it out. So on that note, I'm gonna make a cake and eat it with my best friends. And this is gonna be the first cake that we've made in the world. So it's an especially important cake. Oh. Huh. That's weird. I uh, guess we're having birthday pizza, guys. <laughs>